So the question is, what is the most deadly bacterial disease in the world? Well, it is the mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes the disease tuberculosis or TB. Now, tuberculosis is very, very interesting. Uh, I had no idea it killed 1,800,000 people every single year worldwide. That is incredible. But what's more incredible is I found out that 25% of the population has been infected with TB, but not in its active form, okay? In its dormant or latent form. So there's two forms of TB. You have the active infection, and then you have like an infection that's in remission, or it's called latent, and it kind of sits there, and it doesn't actually cause any symptoms at all, and it's not even infectious. You can't spread TB when it's dormant or when it's latent. Now, this is what you need to know. Not a large percent of TB is active, okay? Like 90% is latent, and only 5 to 10% becomes active. But the problem with this is that 50% of people with an active infection that are not treated actually die. So it is very, very deadly. But my question, of course, is what about the other 50%? Why do they live? What do they have special about them that helps them survive? Well, it's something that I couldn't really find a lot of information on. You see, what's really missing when you deal with infections is your own immune system. That seems to be neglected and instead, we focus more on the antibiotics and other treatments, which I'm going to get to. But for people that have an active uh, TB infection, they usually have a chronic cough, and they might have uh, some mucus that has some blood in it. Uh, they, they have a fever. They get back pain. They lose weight. They might have night sweats. And they might just have these mild symptoms for months. And another unique thing about TB is that apparently... It takes eight to 10 weeks before it even shows up on a test. So you might be infected, but not really know it for weeks. Now, a big problem with the treatment of TB is you're given multiple antibiotics for months and months and months. And the problem is that you might be at risk for getting antibiotic resistance, okay? Like 13% of the people who get treated become resistant to the antibiotic, and then it doesn't work at all. So then what are you going to do? And apparently 6% of the population is resistant to any treatment you do for TB. So I want to share something interesting about these antibiotics. There's some things you need to know. Number one, antibiotics do not do anything for viral infections, okay? They don't do anything for fungal or yeast or candida infections. And 60% of all antibiotic treatments have been shown to be unnecessary because a lot of these infections were viral or fungal or yeast infections. And a really big complication of this is antibiotic resistance because then you start developing these super bugs. I mean, the same exact thing is happening in agriculture. When you're killing off these microbes in the soil, you start to get super bugs. And then now you have a problem with these pathogens that are very, very difficult to kill. And just as an important side note, if you ever take an antibiotic, always take a probiotic at the exact same time, okay? And then afterwards, you don't wanna wait until you're done with the round of antibiotics. And if you're taking a probiotic, that is not going to interfere with the effectiveness of the antibiotic, okay? It's not gonna prolong the infection because you're not taking pathogens, you're taking probiotics. That means you're taking friendly microbes. And uh, when people have antibiotic resistance, they're very uh, vulnerable to getting a secondary infection. And that's primarily going to be like a yeast infection, uh, a candida infection that's going to have this overgrowth. You see, the bacteria are there to keep the yeast in check. And so as soon as you wipe them out, you get this overgrowth. And that creates a whole series of issues. Another really major side effect uh, of antibiotics is brain side effects. I'm talking about cognitive loss of memory, uh, brain fog, confusion, um, psychosis, major depression, anxiety, irritability. So you'll have mood changes and cognitive changes. Now there's something else that's very interesting about TB that I'm gonna share with you. I talked about the active form and the latent form. 
And usually if someone's gonna get the active form of TB, it's gonna be within one to three years. However, they could get it later in life, okay? But the percentage of you getting it becomes less and less. So what would increase your risk of getting it down the road? Well, if you live in the Northern hemisphere, you're more at risk. Also, you're at more at risk during the winter months. So what's common about these two items right here? And if you guessed low vitamin D, you are correct because vitamin D deficiencies increase your risk of the active form of TB by five times. And so there's a very strong link between vitamin D and TB. And that's simply because vitamin D is the most important vitamin for your immune system. It affects almost every part of your immune system and it helps to regulate the immune system. And if you're low in vitamin D, um, you're greatly uh, susceptible to not just TB, but a lot of other infections. And now also I found some interesting information about the vitamin D receptor, okay? There's this genetic problem with vitamin D called polymorphism, where the receptor for vitamin D uh, just won't accept the vitamin D. It's kind of resistant, okay? And so if you have this genetic defect, you're gonna be more susceptible to getting TB. And more and more people are getting assessments for their DNA. And, you, and there's a lot of great information you can find from that, by the way, various weaknesses that you can then strengthen epigenetically. Also, people that have post-traumatic stress syndrome are more likely to get TB. Why? Because it activates cortisol. So stress activates cortisol, which not only lowers your vitamin D, but cortisol in general paralyzes your immune system. This is why so many people develop autoimmune conditions and all sorts of weird, strange illnesses right after major stress events, especially losses. Now, a couple other things that will increase the risk of this infection, age, as you get older, of course, as you get older, your vitamin D goes down and your immune system goes down. Chemotherapy destroys the immune system, so that can also kick in an episode of active TB. And then we have steroids. What steroids? Cortisol. So steroids generally, you know, they're anti-inflammatory, but they put your immune system into a sleep mode. And this comes back to why vitamin D is the most important vitamin for your immune system. And also why you need to be out in the sun a lot more. Get sun exposure, not to the point of getting burned, but just before that, okay? Sun is very, very healthy, not just for the vitamin D, but for the infrared and even the UV spectrum is actually good for certain things as well because UV can actually deactivate certain pollutants in the air as well, as, as well as microbes. As a maintenance dosage, I would recommend about 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3. And in addition to that, if you have... TB, or you're feeling run down, I would beef that up to about 30 to 40,000 IUs for a period of time. Now, if you haven't seen my video on the relationship between the sun and your immune system, I put that right here. Check it out.